negative two. X is negative two. Okay. So here, if you check negative two, we will see it works, right? Yeah. But let me also check a point with you. I told you that one before. X cubed minus X squared plus 12. If you take all things to the right hand side and then switch left and right is zero. Do you remember if we have a root? Suppose we have a rational root. How I told you that if you have a rational root, what can we say about R and S? Um. No. So let me tell you. Suppose I S, okay. S is positive. Can I say it again? Are they like uh, co prime? Oh, yes, they are co prime. S is positive integer, R is integer. Here, finding the root x negative 2 was easy. You can check some numbers 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. But sometimes, for example, one root is negative 1 third. Okay, I want to show you how you can find this root. Okay. So, yeah. we can consider S is positive integer, R is integer, GCD of R and S is 1. They are relatively prime numbers. Then, you can prove that. We want to prove that if you plug in here, we can say R divides 12. This one all the numerator divides on standard. S divides the leading term. One. Okay, do you want to prove this? So let me tell you why we have this. Suppose X, R, and S is a rational root here. So we can plug in here. So if we plug in, can you tell me it would be what? Uh, wouldn't it just be R cubed over S cubed? First, let's write this R over S cubed minus R over S squared plus 12. Then what? Equal plus zero. Plus zero. Now, if we want to get rid of the denominators, so we should multiply both sides by what? S cubed. Exactly. Then we have what? R cubed minus S R squared S plus R cubed plus minus R squared S, then what? Plus 12 S cubed. Plus 12 S square S cubed is equal to 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Now here, the aggregate is multiple of R, and this one is multiple of R. Yeah. So if all terms and zero multiple of R, if all terms except one term are multiple of something, then this term also is multiple of that. So we can conclude R divides what? R divides S. R divides, look, do you agree if we take all things to the right side? Then right side will be multiple of R. Yeah. Look, 12S yeah. S cubed is equal to what? Is equal to r squared s minus r cubed. Yeah. So this one is multiple of r, right? Yeah. So left hand side is also multiple of r, right? Yeah. So r divides what? 12s cubed, right? Yeah. But we know R and S are relatively prime. GCD of R and S is 1. So we can conclude R divides what then? Um, wait, so 12. It divides 12, right? Because look, if A divides B, C, and G, C, D of A and B is 1, then we can conclude what divides what? We call it Euclid's level.
Uh, a divides C. Good job. Here, because R and S are relatively prime, R and S cube also are relatively prime, so R divides 12, right? That's the reason. Look, always, numerator divides constant term, okay? The degree is 3, 4, it's not important. It's the same way you can prove it. Now, let's prove S divides 1. Here, by the same approach, can you tell me if you consider this, S divides what? S divides like a cube. Exactly, because S divides second term, S divides the third term. So S divides R cube. And we know GCD of R and S is one. So S divides what? So S divides um, S to match one. Exactly, so we prove this. So look, always pay attention, leading coefficient here is what? For example, if it was two, S divides two. So S divides yeah. leading coefficient, and R divides constant term, okay? Yeah. So R is integer, R divides 12. R can be what numbers? R is a divisor of 12. Yeah. So, so R can be like 1, 2, 3, 4, six, Exactly. Because it is wow. integer plus minus or plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12, right? S divides 1. S can be what? S can only really be one exactly because s we can't say it's positive why i can't say it's positive because look if s is negative for example negative two will get over negative four is four over two okay for example let me write negative three because they are relatively prime you can say it's plus three over plus so if if it is negative for example three over negative two we can't say negative in numerator right yeah. okay so we can consider always the denominator is positive okay Okay, so here, if you want to check, okay, what are the possible roots for this rational root? It is R over S. If you divide, it will be plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12. If between the, if you check these numbers and none of them work here, then we can conclude what? We can conclude that there is no other rational root, okay? You don't need to check, for example, plus minus five, plus minus seven, okay? Right. And when we check plus minus one, plus minus two, negative two is our answer, okay? Yeah. All right. Now that x cubed minus x squared plus 12 is zero, we know x negative 2 is one answer, so we can factorize. Can you tell me one factor is what? Because x negative 2 is our root. x plus 2. Exactly, x plus 2. And calculate the second bracket. Right. Uh, x squared minus 3x plus 6. x squared plus 3x plus 6. Okay, let's check. Here we want to create x cubed, so you place x squared. Then 2x squared, we have, we want to reach negative x squared it's minus 3x. You said x squared minus 3x. You said x squared minus 3x. Yeah, minus 3x plus 6. Ah, okay. So then negative 6x, we don't have x. So you place plus 6x and 2 times 6, 12, right? Good job. So from here, x is negative 2. And for this one, try to calculate x is or what? Uh, I, I don't think it has real solutions. 
Okay, so find imaginary solution. I don't know how to do that. Use quadratic formula. And instead okay. of the square root of negative one, place i, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, x is 3 plus minus is, okay, so here is negative b plus minus the square root of 9 minus 4ac minus 24, right? Over 2. 3 plus minus. 9 minus 24 is what? Mm, negative 15. Negative 15, exactly. Root negative 15 over 2. So it's 3 plus minus instead of root negative 1, you write i. So i root 15 over 2. Understand? Yeah. Okay. Now let me tell you another polynomial here to only use this method and find the roots are 1. 3x cubed. Um, plus 2x squared plus 2x minus 1 is 0. Find x is 1. Right. Right. And let me just tell you, do you know the name of this is what? This approach that you use this. Have my audio? If you are saying something or mute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you know the name of this is what? To find a root and check these things? Uh, no. This is, we call it rational root theorem, okay? So when you have degree 3, degree more than 2, and you cannot find the root, you can only use this to check, to make sure, do we have any rational root or not? Now use rational root theorem here to find x is what? Uh, is it one third? One third, exactly. Good job. Uh, one root is one third. So, do you agree without rational root theorem? It's hard to find this because we check plus minus one plus minus two, right? Yeah. So, we say it is RS. For example, our root, if it is rational, R is. Integer s is positive integer, gcd of r and s is 1, and r divide constant term, negative 1, s divides leading term or leading coefficient, s can be only 1, 3, r can be plus minus 1. So the only roots that we should check are plus minus 1 and plus minus 1 third. We need to check only these four numbers. Okay, if we don't have any root here, then uh, we don't have any rational root. And if you check, one third is one answer. Now, because one third is one answer, we can factorize this. 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. So, one factor is what if you want to factorize? Uh, minus one third, x minus one third. Exactly. Now, find the next bracket. Right. Okay. Uh, would that be correct? Yes, exactly. So, you factor from 3 and then this. Okay, let me tell you, you can use long division to calculate the second bracket. Let me tell you a way that is faster, okay? So, okay. here I want, I have x, I want to create 3x cubed. So, I should place what here to create 3x cubed? Um, 3x squared. 
Exactly. So when I place 3x squared and multiply these by these two, then it will be what minus what? 3x cubed minus x squared. <laughs> 3x cubed x minus squared. x squared. Exactly. But I want to reach what? I want to reach 2x squared. Now I have negative x squared. So I need to add what to reach 2x squared? Look, we have negative, look, when you place 3x yeah. squared, we have yeah. negative x squared, right? But we, we yeah, should we reach 2x yeah. squared, so we need how many x squared to reach 2x squared? 3x squared. 3x squared. For 3x squared, I should place what here to create 3x squared? Um, 3x. Exactly, so let's place 3x. If you multiply 3x by these two, it would be what? It would be x squared minus 3 one. x squared. If you multiply, then minus what? X. Minus, x. minus x. Exactly. Now we have what? We have 3x cubed plus 2x squared. We could create this one and this one. But we should create 2x and we have negative x. So I should place what here? Um, 3. Exactly. If you place plus 3, then it will be 3x minus 1. So this one will be 2x minus 1. So we could find this, right? Yeah. Okay, so it will be x minus, we can factor from 3, 3x minus 1 cubed times x squared plus x plus 1 is 0, right? Yeah. From here, x is one third. It is our first root. Now use quadratic formula and find the two roots here. Okay. Okay. Uh, would it be this? Negative 1 plus minus. Look, not 3i, root 3i. Let me show you. It's negative 1 plus minus negative 3 over 2, right? Yeah. Root negative 3 is root negative 1 times root what? Sorry, say that again. Negative root negative 3 is root negative 1 times root what? Uh, times root 3. Yes, root negative 1 is i, so it is i root 3, not i, not 3i, okay? Yeah. So it's negative 1 plus minus i root 3 over 2, understand? Yeah. Okay, so with this way we can find rational roots and also in AMC it's used in other Olympiad exams also in areas.